Okay. Uh, good morning and welcome to Bloomfield Public Schools. We are honored to have Governor Ned Lamont, state officials, and town dignitaries here today. The governor will be signing bills that reflect the state's commitment to clean energy and conservation. Three years ago, this town distinguished itself by becoming the first project under Connecticut Shared Clean Energy Facility Pilot Program. This was a novel community solar energy initiative that we believe will continue to be of tremendous value to our school district and residents for years to come. We had the full support of our Board of Education in pursuing this endeavor. The school district will also the school district also contracted with a Bloomfield company, CTEC Solar, to make this project a reality. Without further ado, I would now introduce Katie Dykes, Commissioner of the Department of Energy and Environmental Protection for further comments. Thank you. Thank you, Superintendent, and thank you so much, everyone, for being here today. We're so excited about this occasion on such a gorgeous, gorgeous sunny day. We're making power here in Bloomfield, clean power that's putting people to work, that's help, helping to power our grid and make more affordable energy for Connecticut residents and businesses. And this is an amazing day to celebrate, I think, what is the most important and most consequential legislative session in our history uh, for climate and clean energy. I'm thrilled uh, today that Governor Lamont will be signing two bills, um, Senate Bill 10, uh, which codifies the governor's target of 100, reaching 100 percent zero carbon electricity supply by 2040, as well as Senate Bill 176 that is going to ensure that projects just like this are expanding all across our state. We're thrilled about what this will mean for, our, uh, for the future of our electric grid, for making it more clean, affordable, and reliable. I just have to say, um, since Governor Lamont took office, and with the tools and support that's been provided by the legislature so often on a bipartisan basis, um, the governor has been able to get on-time passage of bipartisan budgets that have prevented the sweeps and stopped the damaging practices of sweeping our energy efficiency programs. He was able to support the largest renewable energy investment in our state's history uh, by supporting a, a purchase of offshore wind um, that uh, Representative Arconti, Senator Needleman, members of the Energy and Technology Committee helped to bring to his desk uh, in a bipartisan bill. Uh, we're really excited about those projects that are coming on online by 2026 uh, that will supply 20 percent of our electric supply from clean offshore wind. The governor also supported um, the measures that we took to prevent the Millstone nuclear facility from shutting down prematurely. Had that happened, we would be standing here today with a grid that would be extremely uh, unreliable, um, uh, with an increase in uh, emissions, greenhouse gas emissions of up to 25 percent across the New England grid. He prevented that from happening, again, with the tools that our legislature provided. Um, and these, all of these different accomplishments add up to today, 65 percent of our grid being carbon free, our, our electricity supply being carbon free here in Connecticut. And by 2026, when those turbines start spinning uh, off the coast of Martha's Vineyard, we'll be at 92 percent. Last December, DEEP issued an integrated resources plan for the state to chart the path for reaching 100 percent zero carbon electric supply by 2050, 20, 2040, excuse me. And our analysis showed that building on this progress that's been supported on a bipartisan basis in our state, we have the chance, uh, we think that this goal is uh, achievable and feasible, and it's also going to provide for a more diverse fuel su uh, supply. Uh, options in our state. It's going to enhance the reliability of our grid, and it's going to create uh, uh, many clean energy jobs all across our state. Senate Bill 176, which the governor is also going to be uh, signing, um, is an example of how investments in clean energy can drive economic development, drive employment, and contribute to lower energy costs uh, for businesses and customers here in our state. Uh, this program will expand the Shared Clean Energy Facility Program. 
um, that is uh, helping to provide access to solar incentives um, to more customers across our state. You don't need to just have a, uh, you know, own your home and have a sunny rooftop in order to participate in our incredible solar programs. Thanks to the Shared Clean Energy Facility Program, just like with community-supported agriculture, um, owners or, or folks who are living in apartment buildings, people who may be credit challenged or have shady roofs, are going to be able to uh, subscribe to a portion of the output of projects just like this one here um, in Bloomfield and uh, allowing them to take advantage of some of the bill savings, um, uh, you know, almost $20 a month or 11 percent reduction in their bills just by subscribing to the output of a shared clean energy facility. And thanks to SB 176, um, it codifies requirements that uh, 80 percent, up to 80 percent of the subscribers of those facilities will be um, uh, low to moderate income customers. I, as we stand here today, I, I, I also um, just want to remark, you know, we know that we are we're proud to have a strong solar community, solar developer community here in our state. Um, Jeff Pipling uh, passed away last year. He was an employee of SeaTech Solar. He was the lead developer on the project that we're standing in front of today. I understand some of his family members are here um, today, and I think that uh, he'd be very proud of these accomplishments. We're so proud of all of the men and women who are supporting solar development across our state. But we have an exciting agenda of many speakers today, and I want to welcome um, to the podium next uh, an amazing colleague, um, the chairman of the Public Utilities Regulatory Authority, Marissa Gillette. Thank you, Commissioner Dykes. Uh, as Commissioner Dykes said, my name is Marissa Gillette, and I'm the chairwoman of the Connecticut Public Utilities Regulatory Authority, which is mouthful, so you can also refer to it as PURA. Uh, I want to thank uh, Commissioner Dykes, uh, Governor Lamont, and the administration uh, for working so hard to pass SB 10 and SB 176. So often with pieces of legislation like this, uh, what we overlook are the technical aspects uh, that get lost in uh, the broad coverage of the uh, amazing um, goals that have been put forth. Uh, in SB 176, for example, uh, we took a step forward by adjusting the definitions to align the definitions of a low to moderate income customers with other programs that the state offers. Now, that sounds like a small win, but it's actually a huge win because so many of the programs that we offer here today uh, require customers to either self-identify or for the utilities to help identify them. When you're working with so many different sets of eligibility criteria, uh, that can become very difficult. So that, among many other technical adjustments in these bills, will have meaningful impacts on the customers that we're seeking to serve. I also want to applaud the legislature and the governor for their passage of SB 176 because of the resilience benefits uh, that locally cited projects can provide to the grid. And uh, I want to thank everyone for uh, coming today on this beautiful day to see them firsthand. Uh, and with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Commissioner Dykes and look forward to your questions. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Chairman Gillette. Next, I'd like to invite to the podium uh, Representative David Arconti, um, the chair of co-chair of the Environment, uh, Energy and Technology Committee, um, who helped us steer these bills to the governor's desk. Uh, thank you, Commissioner. Um, as uh, Commissioner Dykes mentioned, my name is David Arconti. I represent Danbury's 109th district, and I've had uh, the pleasure and honor uh, to co-chair this committee for the past four years um, and to pick up where Commissioner Dykes left off you know she mentioned that this was you know one of the best climate mitigation sessions we've had in recent memory um, and I would say the last four years uh, this is really a culmination of a really amazing uh, four years of climate mitigation policy uh, being enacted in the state of Connecticut you know we started in 2019 with a major commitment to offshore wind uh, one of our biggest purchases of Class One renewables in the state's history. Uh, we followed that up with a pretty significant utility reform uh, piece of legislation, uh, famously dubbed the Take Back Our Grid Act of, of 2020. Um, and we followed that up with uh, battery storage targets in 2021. Connecticut now has a 1,000 megawatt goal of battery storage uh, on the books. And we also gave uh, the Department of Energy and Environmental Pr Protection Procurement Authority, which um, they have planned for and wrote in their, their IRP. And this year, we, we culminate everything by codifying the governor's uh, 2040 uh, zero emissions goal and uh, expanding um, our community uh, solar uh, program in the state of Connecticut. So I'm extremely proud of the fact that we've done all that 
on a bipartisan basis in Connecticut. Um, every single one of those bills passed each chamber on a strong bipartisan vote. That's something uh, my co-chair and I worked really hard at, and I want to give a lot of credit to Commissioner Dykes uh, and Chair Gillette for um, having patience with me um, and taking my calls uh, anytime, any weekday, weeknight, uh, weekend to answer questions and help uh, steer this legislation uh, through the General Assembly. Um, it's been an honor co-chairing uh, th this committee. Uh, this will be my last uh, bill signing, at least uh, on this side, uh, for a while on this subject matter. So it's, it's been fun. And with that, I'll turn it back to Commissioner Dykes. I, I do want to take the prerogative to say um, just how impressive it's been to watch um, your accomplishments, Representative Arconti, and uh, and, and I hope Lonnie won't mind me saying this, but uh, you know we've been blessed to have um, such an, a very active and uh, chair who's been so into the details of energy legislation, and we could not um, have accomplished all those things without your leadership. So thank you so much. Um, I also want to uh, have the I have the pleasure to introduce uh, to the podium Senator Needleman, um, Representative Arconti's partner in crime, as the other co-chair of the Energy and Technology Committee. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you, Commissioner. Aptly put. <laughs> and uh, I, I missed the first part. There was a lot of traffic around here, and we went to a different location. Um, but I, I also uh, want to echo what Representative Arcante said. We worked hard to get as many people on board to do all this work as we possibly could. Um, at times, there were contentious moments, but by and large, I think everybody believes that we have an obligation to do something. And this committee, I think, all due respect to prior chairs, we have done a tremendous amount of work moving the agenda forward um, and, uh, and making our mark as, uh, as a leader state. Um, and I most of all want to thank um, the governor for standing by us and making sure that we stayed on track the whole time. I will deeply miss my partner in crime, as he was <laughs> aptly put, as well as um, one of the ranking members, Senator Formica, because it demonstrated to me that when we work together, we can get a lot done. And we got a lot done in four years. And it was as much work to work together in this environment as it was to actually pass the legislation. We were committed to making sure that whatever we did had the broadest bipartisan support. And that made it, it was work, but the benefit it speaks for itself. So Connecticut will be a leader. Um, the news over the weekend about the Texas grid um, having shed load was another indication of huge problems. Um, so our combination of distributed generation and uh, large procurements should work to balance things out and hopefully uh, make Connecticut the leader it needs to be, as well as making sure that we keep that three-legged stool of reliability, an eye on cost, and, uh, and climate change mitigation in the forefront of everything we do. Uh, so with that, I want to thank you and turn it back to the commissioner. Well, uh, another really important aspect of uh, advancing uh, clean energy legislation is uh, the focus that we've had on affordability and equity. Um, and I, I want to um, just highlight, the, again, the Shared Clean Energy Facility Program, as, as uh, uh, Chairman Gillette mentioned, um, this is really nation-leading. Uh, in terms of the uh, requirements and, the, and the, the guarantees that are in Senate Bill 176 to ensure that those customers, um, you know, those communities that are suffering from the highest levels of air pollution um, uh, coming from power plants, our fossil fuel power plants, those communities that are bearing the highest energy burden uh, in terms of unaffordable electric bills um, are uh, at the forefront of being able to get the benefits of uh, bill reducing uh, energy credits from a clean solar facility. So I want to introduce um, Representative Gibson um, to share, share a few words as well. Hi, right, good morning. I'm Representative, uh, State Representative Bobby Gibson, and welcome to Bloomfield. 
I have to give that um, shameless plug because I'm so happy and excited that you came to our town and to witness what we're doing as we're trying to be leaders in um, renewable sources of energy, clean energy. Uh, I would like to thank our superintendent, Dr. James Thompson, and his crew, his staff for the vision, Dr. Uh, Dr. Mr. Don Harris, head of our Board of Education, who uh, helped lead this initiative because it's so important for our communities to have clean and renewable sources of energy. You know, I, I, I left my office at my, my school and um, as I was walking over here and I saw some of the faces of the students and knowing that I was coming over here to know that we're doing things like this and Governor and Commissioner, thanks for coming over here because it's about them, right? It's about their future. It's about the clean energy and, and having a, an environment that's robust and, and, and for our students and for our kids. And it's also about not only the, the environment, but it's also a, a, a sense of social and economic justice to have a grid like this that people can tap into to lower their energy costs. So it's, it's a win-win. It's, it's something that our, we need to do more of. And again, thanks for coming out. Um, when this is over, I'm going to head back to my school and let, let, let it also be known that at my building, Carmen Aries Middle School, the whole roof has solar panels. So this is something that needs to be applauded, something that we need to talk strongly about, something we need to encourage other communities to come and, and do the same. So thanks for coming to Bloomfield. And as Vice Chair of the Black and Puerto Rican Caucus, this is something I will say that especially, especially communities of color that suffer from some of the, the most toxic and poisonous air conditions, we need more programs like this. Thank you. Thank you, Representative, and I'd like to invite uh, Representative Reyes. I'd like to say a few words. Thank you, Commissioner. Good morning, folks. I'll be brief in my remarks. Uh, as evident by the tan, you can see I love the sun. I have no problem with the sun. So do, I'm right where I need to be. I uh, have the privilege of chairing the Black and Puerto Rican Caucus, and uh, I want to be uh, complimentary of the chairs of energy and environment that are here, as well as Commissioner. And I do want to thank the governor because he said he was going to put environmental justice in all his pieces of legislation, and this is a perfect example of that. Everywhere I go, I keep advocating about environmental justice. I come from a very distressed municipality in Waterbury. It's one of the poorest sections in the state of Connecticut when it comes to uh, uh, medium income and toxicity. It's uh, Census Tract 3505. So I come to, to, to support Bloomfield. The state of Connecticut applauds what the governor is doing here. But I want to leave you with this thought. I would not be doing my job as chair of the Black and Puerto Rican Caucus if I don't advocate for those dollars that are actually being uh, allocated by these Senate Bills 176, Senate Bill 4, Senate Bill 10, that actually get back into those communities that are most affected, number one, and number two, make sure that Hispanic serving agencies and the, the agencies that will hire minorities also are included in this piece of legislation. And I, again, thank everybody for the work they've done here. And uh, I will leave with the remarks for uh, Representative Arconti. He's done a tremendous job. Thank you very much. Well, I, I, I know um, we have, as you can see, there are so many folks to thank for uh, advancing this, this incredible legislation. And uh, we really appreciate all of the legislators, including um, our chairs of the Environment Committee, um, who supported this bill, these bills and enabled them to move forward. Um, but I know we've got some bills to sign. and. Uh, and I think I, I, I want to credit really um, the governor uh, whose vision and whose commitment to addressing climate change, addressing environmental justice and equity, and ensuring clean, affordable electric supply for our state um, could become a, a, a reality. You know, this SB 10 um, is codifying a target that he endorsed um, in an executive order in 2019 and told us to be, start working towards in terms of 100% electric grid. Uh, clean electric grid supply um, and his support for energy efficiency into solar um, has been so transformative here in our state. Um, Governor Lamont, would love to have you say a few words. Well, thanks, Katie and Marissa and each and every one of you. I'm, I'm really proud of our state, proud of our state for continuing to take the lead, not just in terms of the goals we're set that I'd like to think the rest of the country is emulating but also uh, what we've been able to do to deliver. And a special shout out to our uh, environmental chairman. I appreciate uh, Norm Needleman's uh, modest self-assessment of the leadership there in the environmental committee. 
And uh, David Arcani, where are you going? You're too young to retire. We, uh, we need you. Whoa, what is that? <laughs> He's uh, flashing a light at me, I think. Um, that's what we're here for. Let me say, it's not just the goals, but what we've been able to deliver that uh, really means something to me. I'm from the Show Me State. Uh, what I love about um, the solar installation right here is what it's meant in terms of uh, the electric grid. I was particularly struck that on May Day, which you often identify with the communist revolution, we use less electricity off the grid than ever before in our history, at least since we were recording it, which is uh, 25 plus years. And you know why that is? That's because the people of Connecticut are doing the right thing. They're doing the right thing in solar power like this, which powers at least um, scores of homes, a major facility, a board of ed, et cetera. What this we can do around uh, the state more broadly, I love the fact that thanks to our friends in the legislature on a bipartisan basis, renewing our um, energy efficiency fund, again, what that means in terms of reducing our um, electric usage and what that meant on May Day, for example, and what that means in terms of reducing people's electric bills. I think that sets an enormous example. And uh, Noor mentioned we ha we've done this without sacrificing the stability of our uh, electric prices. You see what's going on in some states like Texas, which are incredibly volatile. You know, what we've done with our, um, <clears throat> what we've been able to do with, um, for example, Millstone, we set that up early on when we were here, and what we've raised about a hundred million dollars over the last, um, you know, number of months, because we're able to lock in a price of about five cents a kilowatt hour. And what that $100 million means, by the way, it, it's a hedge. And uh, we paid a little bit during the worst of COVID when electric prices were very, very low. But the message is we have a strong, stable, carbon-free um, source. Look, as I said before, we went from 40% coal and natural gas just in um, 2000 to about 1% here in this region right now. Lonnie, that's thanks to work you did previously as well and each and every one of you going forward. We are making a difference we are leading by example, and that's what this is all about. And, you know, as, as you heard, it's also about environmental justice. And what I particularly find appealing is about the shared use of a facility like this. That solar panels and energy efficiency are just not for guys with a big roof and they can put um, a lot of panels on there and save themselves up, you know, 10 or 15 percent um, all the time. But it's also for um, folks that maybe live in a rental facility or otherwise. They can get access to something like this. I love what we call the dock bill, which is where every single landlord now is obligated to tell you what are the electric costs that you're going to have um, if you rent a place. I want to make sure everybody's working in the same direction. We have the right incentives and those landlords have an incentive to put the solar panels up there as well and provide the energy efficiency. Again, I want to say to each and every one of you, I've never been so proud of Connecticut taking the lead on this, not just in terms of the promises we've made, but the promises we're keeping. Thanks, everybody.